Hi everybody, it's Claire and welcome to a tutorial on uh, perspective. It's my second tutorial on perspective but this is one with um, just specific reference to this piece. So I posted this on our Joanna Bassford Your Pages Facebook site yesterday. Uh, got a lot of brilliant feedback from you guys on there, thank you so much for that. If I just quickly flick you this page you can see that the beautiful Queen Dragon is done in um, clear or metallic watercolour paints and there's already a tutorial on the channel for how to for well for basic tips and tricks for these and then how to blend them as well what we're going to be doing today is this perspective stone floor so I put a post out earlier today asking if any of the guys on the Facebook site would like to see some uh, tips and tricks on how to make this perspective stone floor a lot of you said yes so here we are so this is the piece that I finished yesterday and what you'll see is I'm gonna got my spare copy of ivy underneath so let me just move this out of the way and you can see that I've got my spare copy of ivy underneath and what you can see on this side is some very very basic kit so I've got my ruler I've got a Fab Castell pencil now this one is uh, F, I believe that stands for fine, and it's just because I want to make very, very fine marks on the paper to get that perspective mapped out, and I, I want to be able to easily rub that out, and I find that this particular pencil works really well for that, because it doesn't, if you, if you use it very lightly, it doesn't leave a lot of marks on the paper. Then I've got my Faber-Castell polychromos, I've got my warm greys and I've got one through to six, so one being the lightest and six being the darkest. If you've watched my tutorials, you'll know I'm very much a Prismacolor girl. I have tried this technique with uh, Prismacolors in greys and I just found that the polychromos work better because they texturise better in terms of the unevenness of the stone floor. Your choice, but I would I would recommend you to use an oil-based pencil for this rather than a wax base because I, I just think, as I said, having practice, I think the texture the texture effects come out better with the with the oil-based pencils. So, I'll move these to one side, and I'll show you how we get started. And now, what we want to do is, if you've seen my basic uh, tutorial on perspective that I did quite a few months ago, you'll know that we have to find the the, the vanishing point. So we need to find the center of the page. As a first step. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure out with my ruler so I can see that that's 25 centimeters long so I'm just going to put a dot at random 12 and a half centimeters here just a tiny dot very very lightly and then this what I'm going to do is measure the width um, and I can see that that is 20 and a half just over 20 and a half so I'm going to put my dot around about 10 and a quarter centimetres. So I'm going to put my dot there. And that's the centre of my page. Just rub that little marker out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to match that dot up to each side of the piece of paper. So and I'm not going to draw over the dragon. I just want to do it and I'm not hardly pressing at all on the paper I just want to draw around her shape like that so I've got a very very fine line there and then I'm going to go to each corner and do the same again we're not drawing over our body I'm just lining it up with the bottom left hand corner very lightly just drawing that in same for the third corner and you will see that that gives us the shape of the tunnel and then finally top right like so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be concentrating on the bottom half of this picture and um, so I can see that it's fully in shot and we're going to be zoomed out quite a little bit today because um, I need you to see the whole the, the whole page so the next step so you can see that we've got Actually, what I'm going to do, because this is my practice book, I'm just going to deepen those lines up a little bit so that you can see. But when you do it, I just want you to make very, very fine lines so that you just get guided. You just get like a guideline. But I'm actually going to firm mine up and press quite hard just so that you can physically see them on the, on the actual video. 
and then I'll show you what we do next. And then if I just check that, you can see these. Is that darkened up a little bit? Yeah, you can see those better, I think. Now, what we're going to do is we are, if I just quickly actually go back to my original. So you can see that we've got the, the stone um, lines coming down in perspective from the middle. And I'll show you how we do that. Because the storyline has the dragon in the tunnel and the tunnel is going off into the distance and that's how Ivy gets home. So we want to make a tunnel that looks like it's going off into the distance. Now this page is, as I said, about roughly over, just over 20 centimetres long. So what I want to do is I want to divide it up into five. So I'm just going to, just slightly over every four centimetres, I'm going to make a line. So you'll end up with five equal spaces. Then what we're going to do is, I'm just going to take my vanishing point again, line them up and do exactly the same. Now I am going to draw these lightly because once we put the stonework in, I need to rub them out. But what these do is, you won't actually leave those lines in. You will leave the outside lines in, but you won't leave these inside lines in because they're just a guideline of how to get the perspective on your paving slabs and then the last one and then what is required is a little bit of artistic license so so you can see at the minute that it looks like uh, wooden floorboards and if you wanted to leave it like wooden floorboards and color it in 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 wooden planks fine uh, but but I chose to do mine in um, in 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 the stone of the dragon's castle in the story. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a random pattern of paving stone slabs. And very, very easily, I'm not good at hand drawing, but I think this is pretty much within your grasp, I'm sure it is. So all I'm going to do is just roughly draw. And what I'm going to do is I've made myself a little horizontal line there. And then I'm going to follow the pattern that I've just mapped out. And I'm going to make little. I'm going to make the lines like quite wavy because we want these pa paving slabs to be quite uneven. Another horizontal line like that, and then I'm going to follow this line down here. And then what I've got is my uh, Tombow mono eraser, and where I've drawn that rock, I'm just going to erase inside so that you can see I've drawn myself a paving slab in perspective. I'll just go over that slightly and press on a bit harder so that you can see that a little bit better and don't worry about these being perfect because they still are only in pencil can you see that so I'm following the line of the perspective then I'm going to have a little bit of a play uh, actually I'm just going to put a quick one in here and I'm going to kind of make the corners a little bit rounded so they're not completely you know they're, they're old and they're worn and you kind of want to make that effect so I'm going to put one in here and I'm actually going to make it wrap around this one. And it, this can be as random as you like. So when I said artistic license, it really is. So I'm just going to take this one down. Again, I'm, when I do the vertical lines, I'm following those perspective guide, guidance that I've, that I've drawn in. Again, make them a little bit wobbly, rounded corners. And then we take out the guidelines in between. Now, we're not going to do this whole bit because clearly it would take too long but I will put a few of them in for you. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave like a little kind of gap in between where they would be cemented in, I guess. I'm the daughter of a builder, so I, I would have cement in there. So again, following our little guidelines. And you can play about with this pattern as much as you want. You can put the slabs in, in any pattern whatsoever. The key is to follow these guidelines so that your path looks completely in perspective going into the distance. So I'll just carry on doing a few down this side. So just bear with me. And then I'll show you what we do with the polychromos.
And it doesn't matter where you are on this page, the principle is the same. Just follow these perspective guidelines. Making the edges wobbly, rounded corners a little bit. Actually, I've not made that one very horizontal. So I'm gonna... That's better. As you can see, my freehand drawing's not great, but for the purposes of this, it's fine. I'm gonna rub out this little guideline. Like that. And then I think we'll do one more big one because you'll get the idea of what to do. Take that right across here, I think. Because you can have big ones and small ones and they don't have to look like bricks. They can be completely random shapes. So it's quite nice to have a play. Following this guideline, I'm make mine to about there. I'm just going to put a little one in here for the last one because that will allow me to show you what I need to show you in terms of colouring them in. So can you see when I said at the start that these guidelines, I want you to put them in very finely. So the, the ones on the outside are fine because they're the, they're the corners of the walls, but these guidelines in between, the perspective guidelines, do them very lightly because you'll be rubbing them out as you go and I wouldn't like you to leave marks on your page. Although we're colouring them in grey, so you probably would be able to cover them up, but just to be on the safe side. Okay, so let me check what you can see. Yeah, so you can you can see that I've kind of done a, a little random pattern here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start off, if I just go back to my polychromos, and I'm going to be careful to keep them in order. So as I say, I've got my warm greys, one to six. And I'm going to start with the darkest three. So I'm going to start with four, five, and six. Now, if we think about uh, perspective in the tunnel, as you get further back, you would get further into the blackness, so it would get darker the further you get back if you think about the light. And in the story, Joanna says there's a tiny pinprick of light, but clearly in the middle of that, page that would be behind the dragon so how I've interpreted that is that the tunnel gets darker as it goes towards the back of the of the room also you've got to think about the shadow the dragon would cast so the dragon would cast a shadow on the floor so this bit would be darker as well anyway so we're going to work from dark to light in these various various six warm polychromal pencils so I've got my four, five and six. I'm going to take my number four, which is the lightest of the three I've got in my hand. Checking it's the right one. Yes, it is. And then I think for these four blocks here, I'm going to colour them in. Now, I'm using a medium firm hand because we want these to be textures up a little bit. And what you can actually do is you can press in different levels of firmness and don't worry about that I'll tell you why in a minute just press slightly firmer there try to press in different levels of firmness because you want them to look uneven for once we don't really want an even blend we want it to look really nice and as if the surface was worn in places and was just really really old And just bear with me and I'll just colour these in. And we're not doing anything clever. We're just block colouring in this warm grey 4 polychromo. And I'm just using, applying different pressures throughout this. It's light and heavier just to give that realistic texture. Uh, and I think we'll do so this one comes down past this so what I think we'll do is because we want to get lighter going forward I'm going to blend across bricks so I'm just going to take this one and do the very top like that and leave a tiny little blend line there in a lighter hand and there I think Like that. 
So I get so again, remember these are the darkest of the three colours that I've got in my hand. Darker towards the back of the tunnel, darker because it's in the shadow of where the dragon's sitting. So I'm going to take my uh, warm grey five, which is the mid of the three dark greys that I've got, and I'm just going to randomly make little marks. So again, a mixture of a firm touch and a light touch, just random little splodges, and it's as easy as that. Easy peasy. There's nothing I'll show you that's really difficult, it's really easy once you know how. And you can see those are standing out because they're one shade darker than the base cover of colour that I've just put on. How does that look on camera? Can you see that? What I might do is actually zoom you in a little bit now that we're working on this bit. That's better, you might be able to see the texture a little bit better now. Let me double check. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. So you can see the marks that I'm making. Randomly, randomly. Randomly, randomly. It just gives that texture of worn unevenness to those slabs. Easy. Easy peasy. Now I'm going to take my darkest grey, which is my warm grey six. I'm going to do exactly the same. So all you're doing is building up layers of texture. Again, I'm pressing firm with some of the marks and I'm pressing very lightly with others. And it's a very quick, simple, easy way to do old paving stones. And what I'm going to quickly do, while I've got my darkest grey in my hand, is just colour my little bits in between. Just keeping those kind of rough edges, because this wouldn't look perfect. They'd be old and there'd be bits falling off, and a bit like me really. I'm just going to quickly do this dark bit and then I'll show you how we get lighter with these polychromos as we go further down. So this is very quick but you can spend as much time as you want kind of making your edges uneven and making the corners a little bit rounded and generally put in that feel of age and wear and tear on them. Like that. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put down my darkest pencil, don't need that anymore. I'm going to take my next lightest which is my warm grey 3 and remember if you, if you remember we did the background of these in warm grey 4. So because I want this to get slightly lighter as it comes forward, I'm going to use my light grey 3. So we just repeat the same process. And again, unevenly, I'm just uh, doing a very, very quickly colouring it in, in a mixture of hands. Now you might be able to see, because I can see it with my naked eye, that I've got some slight light white lines here. And that's the pencil mark that I rubbed out when I did the guidelines, which is why I want you to press very, very uh, lightly when you do the guidelines, because when you rub them out, you don't want these little marks. And they will fill in, but the lighter you do the marks to start with, the better it will be. And then we'll do this last big brick, I think. Or at least we'll part colour. We'll part colour down it because you'll get the principle, and then I'll tell you what happens at the at the bottom bricks, because it's exactly the same. You just use your lightest two polychromos. Kind of guessing that you guys, who aren't so keen on Prisma colours, are jumping up and down at this point because I'm 
don't use my polychromos that often, but they are a very, very good quality pencil. Right, so you can see that the base of this is slightly lighter than that. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to take my next grey up, which this time is my warm grey four. You've just got to be careful about keeping your eye on your numbers. Just making sure that you've got the right colours in your hand that are getting lighter all the time. You hear freckle in the background. He's agreeing with what I'm saying. Random marks, firm and light. And you can see them again because the base colour is lighter. Uh, I'm going to take my warm grey five. Random varying marks. And it just works really, really well. And this time, for my in-between bits, I'm going to use my... So this, this was warm grey six. I'm going to use my warm grey five because, as I say, we want... To to keep in mind that we're always getting slightly lighter towards the front. Little uneven edges. And basically that is it. Now I've got my lightest two polychromos to my side. Oh. My lightest two polychromos to the side. And what I tried to do was divvy it up into three. So I kind of had a dark, a dark section, a mid-dark section, then a light section at the bottom. So for your light section at the bottom, again, you would put your darkest grey down. So I'm now putting my warm grey five to one side. And I have my warm grey two to four in my hand now. So you would just repeat the process. So your base colour, so remember our base colour here was uh, five. Our base colour here was our base colour here will be, uh, no sorry, beg your pardon, base colour here was four, base colour there was three, this base colour at the bottom would be two, and you can even go down to one at the bottom here if you like, so the very very lightest, you could even put in a very very light bit at the bottom if you wanted to, and then you simply take your warm grey three and four, and do your little marks over the top. So you've cleverly used your selection of light to dark greys to not only do the texture but to get lighter as it comes forward. So let me run over that again. So this top section, top half, is warm grey 4 as a base and then it's warm grey 5 and warm grey six as the little texture marks and warm grey six for the cementy bits. The middle bit, so this bit, is warm greys three, three to five. So the base is three and the textured mark is four to five. Then we put number five aside. And we take two, three, and four. And the base colour of this bottom bit is two, and the textured bits are three and four. So you're always getting lighter as you're going forward. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense. And basically that's it. So it's really about finding your vanishing point, putting yourself your little markers in, then have a load of fun just randomly putting in the in the in the stone slabs, and then getting that texture is is really easy, as you can see. So I hope you've enjoyed it, hope it's useful and thank you so much for all the wonderful feedback I had on that finished piece. It's always lovely to hear how much you enjoy seeing the, seeing the pages. Bye for now everybody.